This video provides an introduction to systematic reviews. The learning objectives of this video are to understand why systematic reviews are important for clinical practice guidelines and to understand the advantages of systematic reviews for evidence synthesis. Gerald Gartlehner from Cochrane, Austria at Danube University Krems explains why systematic reviews are so essential for guideline development. A systematic review should be the scientific basis of any clinical practice guideline. The US Institute of Medicine, for example, explicitly states that the use of systematic reviews is a quality criterion for guidelines. So why are systematic reviews so essential to guidelines? Well, when guideline panels make recommendations, one of the most important steps is weighing benefits and harms of a particular management option. So what panels need at this stage is a summary of the best available evidence. And this is exactly what systematic reviews are. They summarize the best available evidence on a focused research question. They critically appraise the methodological quality of relevant studies. And they synthesize large amounts of information into palatable pieces. And this predefined objective approach reduces bias and it reduces the risk of one-sided recommendations because of cherry-picking of individual results from studies. And these are the reasons why systematic reviews are so important for trustworthy and well-conducted clinical practice guidelines. Let's have a closer look at systematic reviews. A systematic review is a form of literature review that uses a transparent and systematic process to define a research question, search for studies, assess their quality, and synthesize their findings. Systematic reviews have several notable strengths that are important for guideline development. They condense large amounts of information and attempt to summarize the totality of the evidence, not just a selected sample. They highlight gaps in our knowledge. They critically appraise the methods of included studies. Sometimes they statistically combine results, which is called a meta-analysis. They explore differences between study results and provide cues about subgroup effects. And they provide an assessment of the certainty of the findings, a feature that is particularly useful for guideline development because certainty of evidence characterizes how reliable results are. Let's have a closer look at some of these strengths. Let's assume we conduct research on an intervention that does not have any beneficial effects. For example, bloodletting to cure acute respiratory infections, an intervention that was still widely practiced in the 19th century. If we conducted many studies comparing bloodletting with no intervention, we would get a distribution of study results that would look like this. Each black dot represents a single study. Smaller studies are towards the bottom of the graph and scatter more. Larger studies are towards the top of the graph and are more precise. The red dashed line represents no effect. Just by the play of chance, some studies indeed show that bloodletting is more effective to cure respiratory infections than doing nothing. If we were a salesperson of bloodletting devices, we would be tempted to cherry pick and selectively present studies to clinicians and guideline panels that show large treatment effects. A systematic review, on the other hand, takes the totality of the evidence into consideration, not just a selected sample. And the totality of the evidence will show that bloodletting for acute respiratory infections has no beneficial effects or might even be harmful. 
Another important strength of a systematic review is that it reviews and summarizes large amounts of scientific information. In neurology, for example, there are almost 900 scientific journals that publish the randomized control trials. For guideline panels and individual clinicians, it is nearly impossible to keep track of publications across so many journals. A systematic review identifies and screens large quantities of research evidence and condenses the information into palatable pieces. To learn more about how a systematic review is conducted, please watch the video, Key Steps of a Systematic Review.